What's up, comic book fans? Pete here from Comic Books Transformed, where we talk about uh, your favorite comic book shows that are adaptations that have been turned into streaming shows and um, movies. This time around, we are talking about Loki Season 2, Episode uh, 5, right? No, is it 4? Oh, okay, 4, 4. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. You know, Brian and I have been covering Doom Patrol and um, also Gen V, and those shows are a bit further ahead. They're almost over. Loki's just kind of in the midpoint, though, right, no, Brian? No, they're both kind of almost over. <laughs> oh, Loki's almost over, too? Yeah, isn't there only um, – I, I think there's only six episodes. <gasps> oh, shit, that's right. It's yeah, not no, as long as the other ones. Literally everything is going to end the same week. So all three of these shows are ending the same week. No, wait, Gen V ends next week. Okay. We have, two, we have two each of Doom Patrol and, and Loki. So, okay. okay. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, fun, it's funny, Brian, because, I mean, guys, you know, this isn't any kind of spoiler, but Brian and I are just doing like a marathon recording. We just did Doom Patrol this morning, and uh, now we're going on to Loki. And don't you think that Loki almost borrows a page from Doom Patrol, Brian, where, like, it's just so involved in its own mythology and so weird at this point that, like, it's not as like connected to the MCU as it is like its own weird mythology. Yeah, it's like a puzzle piece got mixed in the box from another puzzle. Oh, good metaphor, and that even ties into our Doom Patrol conversation it does, too. Yes, 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 yes. Um, straight up, here's my thing. I want to talk about things that just stand out for me. Do you feel like Loki is just like a straight up fucking hero at this point? Um, like, yeah, honestly, yes. Um, I think he's. Uh, almost progress more than the original Loki did in a way because he's trying to save the entire existence of the multiverse at this point and that's his one goal and he's although he's really just driven by um his his, his feelings for self uh Syl Sylvie, Sylvie. Mm -hmm. I said selfie I don't know why well, that, is it kind of appropriate too yeah selfie oh, yeah oh, yeah there you go that's right <laughs> right, um, right so uh he's, he's kind of sort of I mean, initially he was really uh, driven by that, which is sort of selfish. But I think it's kind of grown there. But beyond that, I think he cares about more than just her now. Like yeah. I, I think he would you'd want to save Mobius and Ob and all the other other people too. Maybe not yes. wrestling. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, it's funny because this show kind of feels like something else. Like it started out as one thing, and then like halfway through the first season into this season, it's like something else where it's almost like Star Trek or something where the TVA itself is like the ship, like the Enterprise, or it's like Starfleet. And uh, it's all about being part of this like crew, this like TVA crew. And I mean, it, it's definitely treated like space, even though they're in like kind of time or in limbo. It, it, it definitely feels like they're kind of like on a spaceship station, like Deep Space Nine or something. With that in mind. Yeah. Have you ever kind of thought about how... Uh, how this could so easily turn into like an exiles like show <laughs> i have not but i mean that's a really great uh, fucking I point mean, i would kind of love that um th that's one of my favorite obscure like at corners of the x-pen universe and it's just you know like you said this it's a ship and then the you know the idea that they can go anywhere in any universe in time and i would kind of love if they had to go and fix things you know randomly in these universes I don't, unfortunately, I don't think it would work that well in yeah. live action because I think you would need, um, you would need all these other actors in the MCU to to do it properly. Yeah, but uh, it could have worked as like a what if sort of thing, maybe uh, style. Sure. But yeah, um, I, I think about that a lot, especially in, the, in that comment you made about uh, it being the you know the TVA being sort of being the Enterprise really resonated with that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, of course, I do all this fantasy booking. And, um, you know, we should point out to our, re our viewers that, like, the Exiles comic, it was eventually revealed that these Exiles, who were essentially variants of X-Men characters, um, they all kind of served this guy. I think he was, like, the time broker or something. And um, he was this weird kind of bald dude that like worked with a bunch of like cockroaches in this like place that looked like Superman's fortress of solitude. Well, I think he was a construct. Oh, okay, the time okay. was a construct, but yeah, ultimately there were these weird bug things in this weird fortress of solitude thing. Yeah. I, I mean, it would be super, super fucking exciting and awesome if like 
the TVA kind of falls and they can't handle things. And then these weird like bug creatures take over and it kind of segues into like X-Men characters. I mean, it would be an amazing, amazing fucking ending to this show or this season. If like all of a sudden sort of like mutant characters start showing up, but I, I, I know that's not going to happen. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's, that's a pipe dream. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm going too far off the deep end, but uh, with that being said, like it has gone from like Loki's kind of personal redemption story and focusing so much on him being the outsider to he's just a part of this ensemble cast, which is like this TVA cast. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and um, of course, like Ob is like my favorite addition to this cast. He's kind of like the engineer. He's like the Scotty or, you know, there's always an engineer character on each Star Trek show, but he's always like, we got to do this thing. Then we got to reverse the polarities of this thing. And it's, I, I kind of zone out when he's fucking explaining the plan. What about you? Yeah, I, I, I kind of zone out too. And, and it's especially too, it's like the, the scene where uh, Obi and Victor meet. It's like, oh, you and you. And then, you know, the, that whole paradox thing comes up and Obi even says, oh, it's like the snake eating itself. I guess a little on the nose there. Right. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Um, with that being said, though, the Victor Timely stuff, I'm actually really getting all into this. What about you? Yeah, no, I, I am. Uh, you know, I, I think they were implying that Victor Timely is was uh, who would become uh, he who remains. Yeah, and it's just interesting because he he doesn't seem he doesn't seem bad at this point. You know, yeah, like he seems like he wants to help and he's but he's just very hesitant at the same time because everybody seems to um want different things from him or or want the same thing for different reasons i'm still confused by uh you know what's different between what renslayer wants to do and what the tva crew wants to do thank you thank you thank you i i thought about you exactly during this episode, I was like, yep, this is exactly what Brian's talking about. That scene when Renslayer makes it back to the TVA and, and all these people are prisoners of the TVA. They're this like little rogue faction. And then she's like, come join me and let's take back the TVA. And then she just basically slaughters all of them. And it's really gruesome for the MCU kind of scene. Yeah. Um, and they don't show it, but like the implication there that, oh, oh my God, like, I got. I, I'm not a claustrophobic person, but when they were doing that to uh, Brad Wolf in the in episode two, I guess that was uncomfortable to watch. This this that, that enclosing space, but now imagine that with thirty people. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, and it's it's fucked up. It's fucked up because you don't see it. They don't show it. They don't show the aftermath at all. They don't even kind of like show it like out of focus in the background or something. Like you just see people's reaction to it. And you see that Brad Wolf, that X5 guy, you just see his face as it's happening. It's all it's all acting on his face. And he's just like, oh, that's a really great scene. And then you hear like the noise of the blood and stuff. That's really effective. I love that. Yeah. I, I, um, I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, I, I should point out, too, that uh, this episode was directed by Benson and Moorhead, which uh, I've mentioned them before when we discussed the show, but they are super creative directors, and like I'm sure that's all of them, the way they film that. Um, but going back to the point that you were saying, it's like, what the fuck does Renslayer want to do that's different from what those rogue TVA people want to do that's different from Loki's people? Um. Yeah, I, well, the, the rogue people wanted to prune all these new branches. They, they don't, and, and the the you know the the Loki and Mobius crew they want to kind of nurture this all these new multiverses because they they realize that they're actually killing people. Um, and I think you know Docs and and her, that crew um, they wanted to to kind of stick to the previous status quo. I kind of get that, but I don't know what I, Renslayer where that's where it confuses me because. It's, it seems, it doesn't seem like she, it seems more like she wants to fix the loom to allow it to, uh, to, to function properly, much like Loki and Mobius do. But right. I, I guess maybe just she wants to be in power and not anybody else, I guess. Um, uh, and you know, I was very surprised that the, you know, the last episode and then that cliffhanger were like, oh, Miss Bennett says like, oh, I know something that's going to make you really angry. And they opened the show with that, with, with that, that answer to that question, which is, um, you know, Renslayer helped he remains get to where he was, and then he kind of cast them all off and wiped all their memories, which is kind of fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen to Marvel. I don't know if like 
they're eventually not going to be able to complete their ultimate plans for this new saga. I don't know if that's going to happen or if they will or, or if like the audience will be there or if they're going to change things around. But to me, it's really interesting all the stuff they're doing with Victor Timely that's sort of like making this character much more three-dimensional. And, and one thing that's really interesting about this Kang character, whether we're seeing like a variant of him in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, or the guy in this show, is that he is brilliant. He seems to want to do things based on his inventions, but he's also just like very cold and like self-serving. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but we don't. I don't think we see that too much of that yet in this exact iteration of Victor. Agreed, agreed. But like in the last episode, there was like at least two scenes where someone thinks they're like aligned with him and he's working with them, and then he's just basically like, "No, nope, fuck you, I'm doing my own thing," you know. True, true. And, and, and this this one is such an interesting thing because like he goes to get hot chocolate with this one TVA guy. And it's this interesting scene because he like, I guess he like tweaks the hot chocolate machine and he gives it to the guy. And the guy gets pruned, and they're they're just doing this thing with it's it's just so weird to me because like um, Jonathan Majors, whenever I look at him, I just think about how you know did he assault women? Is he kind of this sort of angry, mean person? And everyone has to work around him and like his little stuttering and his quirks, um, and then he's playing this character that's kind of feeble. But then is also sinister. It's it's this really weird thing. Do you do you feel that way watching? Yeah, Jonathan you know, it, it's funny with that whole hot chocolate scene. I, I thought that was going to be like a sinister turn for him, but it, it was more just like circumstantial, and they just focused on hot chocolate oddly for a few minutes. <laughs> right, right. See, to me, I'll always appreciate shit like that because it's different and weird and quirky versus just like, oh, we got to fit this into this fucking mythology. Like, I, I like when it's like weird, obscure shit. And, and, like, it's just this weird scene where he, like, hands hot chocolate to this guy. And, and it's, like, it's like there's this, like, reverence. And, it, and, and you know, and then the guy drinks it. I, I just, I don't know. It's so interesting. But, like, for this character, it's it's kind of like he, he can't control his own destiny because someone else has given him this book. And then he's destined to become this sort of super powerful, manipulative, evil guy. I think it's really interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so who kills the guy? I forget who kills him. It, the was fucking X5. 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 That's right. And then, yeah. And then, you know, essentially by the end of this episode, kind of everybody dies. <laughs> yeah. And see, I mean, it, at that point, when you see that many of the, the actors in the show die, you're like, oh, there's going to be some kind of reset. Um, but you know, it was shocking to see, um, you know, Renslayer get pruned first. Right. Uh, and, and and I'm like, at that point, you're like, whoa, that, like, that's kind of bold. Uh, right. Without really, you know, finishing her arc and completing her motives and all that. Uh, and then, you you know, they're kind of arguing about who's going to go in and, and face this, you know, uh, radiation, radiation thing that is going to rip people's faces off or melt people's faces off. And then, you know, Victor Timely ultimately goes and he's instantly, like, atomized. And that's yeah. when you kind of start thinking like, okay, um, and then, you know, everything starts exploding and you see, you know, the last thing you see is Loki kind of looking at this white, bright light. And uh, that's when you kind of figure that, okay, they're not dead. They're going to get rebooted and we're in some kind of time loop or something, like right. a Groundhog Day kind of thing, maybe. Right, right, exactly. And so, like, I, um, you know, we've seen so much media. We've consumed so much media. So when we see certain things, we have that exact reaction like you're talking about where you're like, oh, okay, they're going to reset because they're not going to let this person die. And so when they killed off Renslayer, it was done in such a way where it's like he stabs her and she like gets pruned, but the camera's already kind of moving and following the rest of the action. So it's like, it's not like this focused death thing. So it's like, okay, they're not focusing on her death. So they probably are going to reset it. And then the part that I was so fucking confused about it. I'm like I'm like what is going on I don't even know what I'm watching at this point was that like you have this weird scene where Loki is trying to get to Sylvie or he's trying to get to these doors and Sylvie's coming out of the doors and then Loki prunes himself and he says it's all going to make sense and I'm like what the fuck is even going on Oh well I mean that's that was from the first episode you know um it, that was when Loki needed to prune when Obi told him to prune himself with the green lights so we can get sucked into the other timeline that that's kind of telling me this is they're caught in a loop. That's the okay. exact scene that tells me they're 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 that's the, I was going to reset to 
maybe where the first episode was or something. I, I don't know. And and I, we're gonna get some kind of Groundhog Day situation. Oh, dude, you're a thousand percent right. And thank you for reminding me too. Yeah, yeah, it's totally gonna begin like at the okay, the beginning of the season again. Okay, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is like a snake eating its own tail. It's just like kind of like a cycle. It's yep, like the wheel of time. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. Um, in the interest of like, because we're doing a marathon recording, I'm just trying to hit all the beats I wanted to discuss. Uh, Mobius. No, there's there's nothing. Yeah, they're, they're, they talk about Mobius again and, and where his place in the timeline is. Which again, he was Sylvie's manager. I'm I'm sorry. There's no way it's not that. I'm fantasy booking. And I'm very disappointed if that's wrong because it's it's feasible. It makes sense. It's not something crazy like Mephisto, but that's gonna be what it is. I guarantee it. Okay. 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 I like that though. I like that. And then, um, yeah, I, mean, I think that pretty much actually covers everything for this episode. I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 So what? We only have two episodes left. Two left. Okay. 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 Cool. 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 Well, I actually enjoyed talking about it with you, and I will enjoy talking about episode five with you even more when it's not like oh we got to do all these different shows at once. Yes. So, guys, make sure that you are with us for Loki episode five, which will be coming your way next week.